In this lecture, we're going to discuss orbitals. Now, orbitals were regions around the nucleus where there's going to be a very high probability of finding an electron. Now, if you've, uh, uh, if you've seen the uh, previous lecture on wave-particle duality, you would know that electrons are not very localized. It's very hard to actually figure out where an electron is. So, an area would be described uh, which is going to have a very high probability of finding an electron. So you can't really pinpoint in the three-dimensional space where that electron is going to be. You'll describe a region where there's going to be a very high probability of finding an electron. So that area or that region is going to be called an orbital. And there are all sorts of different orbitals having different shapes, which are going to have a different area around the nucleus. So we're going to start off with the first one, which is the S orbital. Now, the S orbital... The name is S. It's a it's a spherical region. Its its shape is going to be spherical as shown in the diagram. So if your nucleus is right at the center, there's going to be a spherical region around the nucleus where there's going to be a very high probability of finding an electron. So if an electron is an S orbital, so it's going to be a spherical region around the nucleus where there's going to be a high probability probability of finding an electron. Next, we are going to uh, describe uh, another orbital having a different name, which is called the P orbital. And the P orbital actually comes in three different uh, versions. One is the PX, one is the PY, and the third one is the PZ orbital. Now, the reason why they have uh, different names is the P orbital. Let me describe the shape first. So the nucleus is going to be right in the center. So that's where the nucleus is. And if you want to locate an electron which is in the p orbital, then the electron would probably be in two lobes, which would be on one on either side of the nucleus. So there's going to be a region to the right and to the left of the nucleus where there's going to be a very high probability of finding that particular electron. Now, uh, its uh, shape is described as it's, it's a, it's a dumbbell-shaped it's a dumbbell shaped orbital. So if somebody asks you what the shape of a P orbital is, it's going to look like a dumbbell. So it's a dumbbell shaped orbital. And uh, if an electron is in the P orbital, then there would be two lobes around the nucleus. Now, since uh, it's going to have a specific orientation, uh, the PX would mean, if you talk about the PX orbital, then that would mean that the two lobes are lying on the X axis. One is on the right side of the nucleus and the one is on the left side. If the electron is in the PY orbital, then again, it's a dumbbell shaped region around the nucleus, but this time the dumbbell shaped region is on the Y axis. And similarly, there's going to be, if an electron is in the PZ orbital, then it's going to be a dumbbell shaped region. There would be two lows, but they would be lying on the Z axis. So the P orbital comes in three versions. So if an electron is in the P orbital, then it's probably a dumbbell shaped region around the nucleus, having three different orientations. One is PX, one is PY, and one is PZ. Now the third orbital, uh, the third type of orbital, which is called the D orbital, it's probably not in the course for AS, but it's it's uh, it's uh, uh, in A2 course. What the D orbital is, it's a flower shaped region. So this entire region, there would be five different versions of the D orbital. So there is DXY. So it's a flower shaped region. So if an electron is in the DXY orbital, then it's probably be, the electron would probably be somewhere in this region, which is described by these lobes. There would be four lobes. And if it's in the DXY uh, orbital, then it, this flower shaped region would be lying on the XY plane. Similarly, there is a, there's a DX, Z orbital, and then you have the dyz orbital, and then you have the dx square minus y square orbital, and then you have the dz square orbital. Now, these are five different orbitals, which are all um, uh, uh, versions of five different versions of the d orbital. So, the electron would be in these flower shaped regions. The dz square orbital has a different shape. So if an electron is in either of these orbitals, then you can look at the shape and you can figure out where there's going to be a very high probability of finding, finding an electron. So coming back and summarizing this, uh, 
electron would if you want to find an electron an electron would have a very high probability of being in certain places in certain regions and all these regions are given different names which are called orbitals you have the s orbital which is a spherical shaped region around the nucleus so if an electron is in the s orbital it's going to be in a spherical region around the nucleus if it's in the p orbital it's going to be a double shaped region around the nucleus where there's going to be a very high probability of finding an electron and if it's a d orbital then it's probably a flower shaped region around the nucleus and there are different versions of the d orbital and the p orbital and there is an f orbital as well and since uh, f orbitals are involved for very large atoms you just need to remember that an f orbital whenever somebody talks about an f orbital then there would be seven different types of f orbitals so when somebody t t talks about the f orbital then remember the, he's basically talking about seven different types of f orbitals so it could be either one of those now we've studied orbitals now and we know what orbitals are they're regions around the nucleus where there's a, there's going to be a very high probability of finding an electron now uh, uh, there are all sorts of different uh, regions the s p d and f orbitals and there are different versions of these orbitals now we're going to talk about subshells now subshells are a collections of different degenerate orbitals what that means is that they are orbitals having exactly the same energy level so in a lot, lot of ways they are basically identical orbitals except that the area that they that they cover is going to be different so a subshell is going to be a group of orbitals having the same energy level and we're going to start off with the first one which is the which is the s subshell now if you if you talk about the s subshell the s subshell is going to only contain it only has one s orbital so there's only one s orbital in it so if an electron is in the s subshell that means that it's going to be in the s orbital and the s orbital is a spherical region around the nucleus so the nucleus is at the center and there's going to be a spherical region around the nucleus where there's going to be a high probability of finding that electron similarly we have another orbital which is called uh, another subshell which is called the p subshell and if we talk about the p subshell now the p subshell is actually made up of three different p orbitals one is the px one is py and the third one is pz so i've drawn those uh, three different p orbitals which we studied bef earlier bef as well they're double shaped regions so if an electron is in the px orbital it's going to be in it's the probability of finding that electron would be in two lobes on either side of the nucleus uh, but px would mean that the lobes are on the x-axis py means that the lobes are on the y-axis and pz means that the lobes are on the Z axis by looking at the three orbitals they're basically identical orbitals which is why we group them together which is why p subshell is going to contain three identical orbitals px py pz the only difference is their orientation so if you if you want to uh, see these three orbitals together if i want to draw the draw a P subshell. So a P subshell would look something like this. The nucleus is at the center, and there's going to be, let's say, this is the z axis. So that means it's going to have the P z orbital. So there would be two dumbbell shaped regions around the nucleus. Let me shade those regions as well. So they they're going to be two dumbbell shaped regions around the nucleus on the z-axis that would mean this is the pz orbital and let's uh, now draw the py orbital so let's say this is the y-axis so there's going to be a double shaped region around the nucleus where there's going to be a high probability of finding an electron so this here is the py orbital and let's say let's draw the px orbital so let's say this is the x-axis so i'm drawing a three-dimensional diagram so the x-axis would have the px orbital so the three orbitals if you look at them together the, that would comprise that would basically constitute the p subshell and the p subshell is going to have three orbitals one is px py and pz and uh, lastly i'm going to discuss the d subshell it, it's going to contain it's going to com it's com it's uh, made up of 
five different d orbitals and we've discussed the different shapes of the d orbitals and the different names of the d orbitals which is not important in as but it's going to be important in a2 so the d orbital is going to be made up of all these five different d orbitals put to put together so if an electron is in the d subshell that would mean it could be in the dxy dxc dyz dx square minus y square or dz square orbital so the d subshell is made up of these five d orbitals which are having the same energy level so the electron could be in any of these five different regions and lastly the f subshell is going to have seven different f orbitals so that is all that you need to remember for the f subshell